Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Dr. Lal Patlab's Q4 and FY22 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nishit Solanki from CDR India. Thank you and over to you Mr. Solanki. Thank you. Good evening everyone and welcome to Dr. Lal Patlab's Q4 and FY22 earnings conference call. Today we are joined by senior members of the management team including honorary brigadier Dr. Arvind Lal, executive chairman, Dr. Om Prakash Manchanda, managing director, Mr. Bharat, CEO, Mr. Vedh Prakash Goel, group CFO, along with Mr. Shankar Banerjee, CEO of Suburban and other group companies, and Mr. Rajat Kalra, company secretary and head of investor relations. I would like to share our standard disclaimer here. Some of the statements made on today's conference call could be forward-looking in nature, and the actual results could vary from these forward-looking statements. A detailed statement in this regard is available in the results presentation, which has been circulated earlier, and also available on Stock Exchange website. I would now like to invite Dr. Arvind Lal to share his perspectives. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Solanki. A very good evening and a warm welcome to everyone present on the call. We are here to discuss Dr. Lal Patrap's Q4 and FY22 earnings. I would like to take you all through the key developments and updates during the period under review. Before I begin, I would like to share that this is the first full quarter post the acquisition of Suburban Diagnostics, and the synergies of two brands have made a significant positive impact on our business performance in the Western market. We now aim to penetrate further and responsibly grow in this market to deliver high-quality diagnostics with superior patient experience. In the initial few weeks, we reported some spurt in COVID testing due to Omicron variant, which was rather short-lived. As the case loads declined at a rapid pace, with many opting for home testing due to mild symptoms, and on the flip side, non-COVID business gained healthy momentum with strong volume gains as we resumed back to pre-COVID trajectory. Last two years have been both challenging and exciting for us as we navigated through a contagious spread of COVID-19 across the country while significantly enhancing our infrastructure systems and processes to tackle such pandemics. More importantly, it has created better awareness among the citizens towards maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Accordingly, diagnostics has been gaining a lot of traction since people have been keeping a check on their health and well-being. There continues to be a constant shift in the industry landscape as more and more market share is acquired by organized players. The quality and consistency of diagnostic services provided by organized players, which strictly adhere to safety protocols, is trusted by patients a lot more than of the organized players, especially in the current scenario. Being the largest Fan India player, Dr. Lal Path Labs is well positioned to benefit from this shift and the acquisition of suburban diagnostics has further strengthened our play within the Western region. Since the onset of the pandemic, the competitive intensity in this space has been on the rise. However, organized players have been gaining more share due to the inherent advantages with respect to safety and hygiene. This, in our opinion, is a welcome change as the industry will benefit with the improving quality standards and capabilities of the players in the space. We foresee healthy competition between organized players that will further expand the market and elevate the customer experience. Overall, India remains a largely underserved market. The scope for growth for companies like ours is huge, and we want to leverage our position to maximize our share of the pie. At Dr. Lal Path Labs, we see ourselves as a progressive brand and have been at the forefront of integrating technology into our business model. This helps us reduce costs as well as provide a more seamless and cohesive experience to our patients. With the pace at which the world is moving, it is imperative for companies like ours to adapt to these changes to maintain the edge over competitors. While we are seeing an overall revival in the non-COVID testing in the country or in the industry, the threat of the next wave remains 
and we must remain vigilant and take all the necessary steps to keep the pandemic at bay. Thank you very much. I would now like to hand the floor to Dr. Om. Over to you, Om. Thank you, Dr. Lal. Welcome everyone to Dr. Lal Pathnet's Q4 and FY22 earnings call. I hope that you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. I'll talk to you about the current trends as well as strategic focus strategic focus of Dr. Lal Path Labs. While we observed a short spike in COVID-related testing in January this year, but subsequently there has been a sharp decline in COVID and COVID-related tests since February onwards. We continue to observe similar trends in the current quarter as well. <coughs> we have now completed eight quarters of pandemic impact on our business that caused wild fluctuations on quarterly basis. We are now in a better position to analyze uh, broad trends on yearly basis. The key trends that I observe are, number one, there is a significant shift towards direct-to-home business. Home collections now contribute nearly 20%, uh, sorry, 12% that used to be in the range of 5 to 6% uh, during pre-COVID days. Second, there is a significant shift of patient flow from company-owned infrastructure to franchisee infrastructure. Third, contribution from bundle packages continues to rise. Fourth, non-COVID business growth rates are now coming back to pre-COVID levels. There were two parts to suburban transactions, uh, one which we had uh, done at the signing at the time of signing, and second is was linked to FY22 performance. We have now completed the remaining part of the transition as well as FY22 comes to a close. The expansion work in Mumbai has started. We shall soon be launching our reference lab in Mumbai. Our business will continue to build on the following pillars of growth. One, widen geographical footprint both through organic and inorganic means. Two, Disproportionate focus on franchisee management as the contribution from franchisee network uh, grows. Three, continuous improvement in consumer convenience with the help of digital technologies. Four, a widened test menu in the regional labs to meet the market requirements on turnaround time. Five, drive cost effectiveness programs to stay competitive on pricing. Six, continue to launch newer high end tests. Seven, bring in sharp organizational focus on ESG. Our intention remains to expand accessibility to quality diagnostics, and towards that, we continue to partner with even online aggregators and platforms to build our reach further. Today, Dr. Lal Path Labs is a well-known brand in India. It has become synonymous with quality, affordability, and convenience. On the back of this trust, we will continue to grow our business and market share as we expand into every nook and corner of India. The serviceable market has only increased since 2020, and we are determined to make a mark and stay the biggest player in the diagnostic uh, industry to, in times to come. With that, now I would like to invite our CEO, Bharat, to continue this conversation. Over to you, Bharat. Thank you, Om. I warmly welcome you all to this call today. I will take you through the business highlights, including suburban diagnostics. In Q4 FY22, we served 6.7 million patients, generating a revenue of 486 crores with a growth of 12.7%. For the completed financial year 22, we served 27.3 million patients with a revenue of 2,087 crores and a growth rate of 32% over FY21. In Q4, COVID and allied tests contributed to 66 crores, that is 14% of the overall revenue, and rupees 396 for the full financial year FY22, which is 19% of the overall revenue for the full year. In Q4-22, our non-COVID revenue of 419.7 crores registered a growth of 12.2% over Q4 last year. This growth in non-COVID revenue is led by patient volumes, which registered a growth of 10.4%. In the full financial year 22, we clocked a non-COVID non revenue of 1691 crores, registering a growth of 34.5%. This growth is on account of patient volume growth of 31.3%. Q4 
Q4 FI22 was affected by Omicron wave of COVID-19, which had an adverse impact on the non-COVID business in the month of January and February. <clears throat> However, given a consistent emphasis on the restoration of momentum in the non-COVID business, we were able to come back to normalcy in the month of March 22. We are pleased to share with you that our Hub Lab expansion program continues to do well with a contribution of near 40% in the total processing volume of the company. Our growth plan in South is progressing well and the test venue expansion at our Bangalore Reference Lab, opening of new satellite labs in South and higher contribution from speciality and super speciality test portfolio. We have made significant progress on enabling our partners to leverage digital tools and technologies to serve our patients. During the quarter, we have rolled out a new portal for our 4,500 plus franchisee partner network. This will set the stage for further digital play in the time to come. We have also made investments towards capturing customer feedback at nearly all the touch points we operate on. During the quarter, we have invested in strong market activation and partner engagement activities through physical and digital platforms. Our investments in digital coupled with our geographical expansion augur well for the company and we believe we will realize the benefits of these investments for the long period of time to come. As we look forward to FI23, we will continue to remain focused on driving growth through better patient and partner experience, leveraging digital technologies and improving a geographical reach and test portfolio. With that, I would like to invite Ved to take you all through the financial performance. Over to you, Ved. Thank you, Bharat. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining this call today. Please note that the results for Q4 and full year FY22 include suburban with effect from 12th November 2021 and not strictly comparable with previous year. I am now sharing some of the financial highlights for the quarter 4 and full year FY22. Revenue for Q4 FY22 is Rs 486 crore as compared to Rs 431 crore in last year same quarter. A growth of 12.7%. Non-COVID revenue increased by 12.2% in Q4 FY22. Revenue for full year FY22 is Rs. 2087 crore as compared to 1581 crore in the last year. A growth of 32%. Non-COVID revenue for full year increased by 34.5%. Revenue from COVID and allied tests in Q4 FY22 is Rs. 66 crore, which contributes to 14% of total revenue. Full year COVID and allied test revenue is 396 crore, which contributes to 19% of total revenue. Revenue realization per patient for Q4 FY22 is Rs. 728 as against Rs. 732 for Q4 last year. And for full year, revenue realization is 765 rupees as against 781 for FY21. Non-COVID realization per patient for Q4 is rupees 693 and for full year, it is 685 rupees. Normalized EBITDA after eliminating the impact of RSU and CSR charge in Q4 FY22 is rupees 131 crore as compared to Rs. 129 crore reported in Q4 last year. And for full year, uh, it is Rs. 600 crore as compared to Rs. 463 crore in FY21. Normalized EBITDA margin for Q4 FY22 is Rs. Is 26.9% and for full year is 28.8%. Normalized PBT after eliminating the impact of notional depreciation on consolidation of suburban for Q4 FY22 is Rs. 94 crore and for FY22 is Rs. 494 crore. Normalized PBT margin for Q4 FY22 is 19.4% and for full year is 23.7%. Normalized PAT after eliminating the impact of national depreciation is Rs. 73 crore. Normalized PAT margin for Q4 is 15%. Normalized PAT for full year is Rs. 369 crore as against 297 crore last year FY21. 
नॉर्मलाइज पैट मार्जिन फॉर द फुल ईयर एफ आई ट्वेंटी टू इज सेवेंटीन पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट नेट कैश एंड कैश इक्वलेंट आफ्टर एडजस्टमेंट ऑफ बोरोइंग एट द एंड ऑफ मार्च थर्टी फर्स्ट टू इज रुपीज थ्री करोड़ At last, we are pleased to share that the board of directors of the company have approved a final dividend of rupees six per share. With this final dividend, the total dividend for the year FY22 is rupees twelve per share. The final dividend is subject to approval of uh, shareholders in AGM. This brings me to the conclusion of my opening remarks, and I would now request the moderator to open the forum for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Prakash Kapadia from Vanvit Portfolio Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Couple of questions from my end. So, if I look at the organic non-COVID revenues for Dr. Lal, they are up four percent this quarter on a year-on-year basis. So, if you could uh, you know, highlight why is this uh, the growth lower than what we've seen for the last few quarters. So, uh, how did you get this four uh, percent? I derived that. Uh, I'll just tell you. Uh, if I exclude the suburban revenues of you know non-COVID and take the total non-COVID revenues, you know, year on year basis. Right. That's what thirty percent. So last year our non-COVID revenue for full year was 1257 crore. Actually, you you talk about Q4. Yeah, yeah, Q4 is focused. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I was looking at full year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what's the question? Um, you know, this 4% year-on-year growth is lower than what we've uh, you know seen over the last few quarters. Okay. Right. For for Dr. Lal's business. So uh, I think our response to this question is, uh, which Bharat also mentioned in his opening comments, is the month of January uh, non-COVID was fairly low, mainly because of uh, Omicron wave, and I think it was a little bit of a self-imposed lockdown and restriction on movements, where we saw a sharp dip in our non-COVID revenue, which continued till first half of February. I think second half of February onwards, we saw some improvement. So I think we. we saw a fairly good improvement in the month of march while we are not sharing month on month figures uh, but we are fairly confident that we exited on a good note as far as the quarter is concerned but i agree with you that overall quarter was slightly muted on non covid mainly because of omicron in the month of uh, january okay so what i was trying to understand there is no change in you know competitive intensity or one off or you know some noise level which has affected this performance is what i was trying to find Yeah, I think there is so much of noise around uh, competitive intensity. I think there is no doubt about that. The intensity is definitely there. Uh, but my sense is also this intensity has gone up uh, primarily because of these two years of very high operating leverage. Uh, both small and large players have seen in their P&L. Uh, some of the regional players' contribution of COVID has been as high as 50 percent, and they have seen aggressive sort of a uh they they continue to think that this will stay on but uh, definitely covid is down now and uh, let's see how it pans out going forward uh competitive intensity is i would say is much more visible it has always been there in this industry it's not that we we always used to face from unorganized players now there are few more organized players so i won't discount that but i would say that uh it is primarily more because of omicron rather than anything else 
And you know, post the Omicron wave, any any you know behavioral change from the consumer side in terms of preventive tests or frequency, because you know, COVID obviously India seems to be doing fairly well, and you know that seems to be under control. Why I'm trying to understand this is you know as we step forward in Q1 of 23, I think last year had a very big phase of you know RT PCR, T dimer, I IL6. And, and, you know, because of that variant, so non-COVID revenues have to, you know, grow at a rapid pace for us, you know, to ensure we grow in the coming quarter. So, you know, what's the game plan to grow our non-COVID revenues? Because that seems to be, you know, more structural for us. That seems to be the area which, you know, we keep focusing on. And also, you know, Dr. Om, if you could highlight, you know, within that, you know, approach to grow non-COVID, how should we, you know, Look at it in the medium term. Will it be, you know, Dr. Lal's organic business, newly acquired inorganic assets, or, you know, the omni-channel approach, which, you know, we've been working in tier two, tier three cities. So if you could give some color on medium term. Yeah, yeah. thanks. So I think uh, we have few approaches to deal with as we go forward. Number one is we believe that tier two, tier three towns, uh, will grow faster and we are very well placed in these markets like Northern India and Eastern India. And towards that, we are building hub labs in many of these places like uh, Varanasi, Meerut or Lucknow. So which will help us to uh, offer, you know, competitive sort of value proposition in terms of turnaround time for even higher, higher end <coughs> in these markets. So that's one approach we have which means in our strong markets we go deeper and uh, increase our presence in tier 2 and tier 3 towns. So especially UP is a very large market and we believe that's a, a strength for us. The second is uh, south and west region which I've, re I've been repeatedly saying. It's important for us to actually be present in these markets. <coughs> With suburban coming in, now we have presence in west region and uh, I think Maharashtra is looking much stronger. So hopefully, as you ask the question medium term, I do believe in two to three years time frame, we should really be well placed in West region. I think the only area which probably we need to answer is South. Uh, right now, our efforts are more driven organically, but as we go along, if there is some inorganic assets uh, that come, come our way, we'll definitely look at that. I think the third area is, which you mentioned about digital approach, uh, there is a consumer behavior shift towards home collections and they want to book online, they want to reduce the length of stay uh, when they come to any healthcare institution, not only for diagnosis but even in hospital space as well. So I think the overall <coughs> behavior of the consumer has been uh, using both physical as well as digital channel and we will continue to invest in that area. And I think the one question which is often being asked to me is that there are a lot of these e-pharmacy players coming in. Would you partner with them? I think answer is clear, yes. We will definitely look at some kind of partnership with them because we don't plan to go into e-pharmacy ourselves. And they want to actually offer the full sort of a stack model. And we will look at how do we increase our reach by partnering with them as we go along. And lastly, from my side, you know, uh, anything on suburban in terms of, you know, the milestone payout, when do we get a sense of, you know, what has been achieved, there was certain, you know, milestone based uh, payments, are we trending there, not trending, anything on suburban, if you can share that piece. I think, uh, sorry, yeah, that piece is already closed now, it was linked to FY22 performance, and uh, we are not paying anything over and above what we had paid in the first tranche, primarily because there were certain numbers which were not achieved. And, and I must say that uh, uh, Suburban as a, as a company is, uh, had a very high contribution of COVID and with the sudden fall of COVID, uh, this is also adversely impacted, which impacted the second part of the payout as well. So that piece is now closed, so there's nothing due from our side to Suburban right now. So now we are fully active in this company and uh, we have also appointed uh, Shankho as our uh, CEO for Suburban as well as he'll also look after other group companies. So we are providing a very sharp uh, focus to drive suburban. Let's see how it goes. Yes, we are up against a uh, very high COVID base, which of course we'll see a decline in this year, 
but we are very hopeful that non covid uh, will grow better in this market uh, in this company and uh, we are looking at sabab not as a quarterly basis or a yearly basis but more on a long term basis thank you the next question is from the line of chirag dagli from the est mutual fund please go ahead yes, sir thank you for the opportunity uh, sir can you comment on the profitability of the covid business uh, versus the rest of the business for the full year of fi22 actually it's very difficult to segregate covid profitability uh all i can say that uh, covid business gave a huge sort of operating leverage because covid as a test is much more centralized test than any other routine test uh most of the other tests like lipid profiles or thyroid etc they are all done routine they are done in a distributed format in 200 labs but rt pcr is one test which is the early part of this covid wave was actually done in maybe few labs maybe four or five later we expanded to about 16 17 but fact of the matter is that whatever gross margins you actually make on covid was flowing into ebitda so uh, and secondly you saw the dynamic pricing virtually every month the prices were coming down so it really doesn't it's it's very difficult for us to actually put down a number but clearly uh, uh in 396 crore of covid business that we have in fy22 uh definitely has contributed to the bottom line so which is very very difficult for us to put a finger on saying how much it is but uh, as this slides down yes it will have impact on the overall number as well in fy23 we must keep that in mind it is not dramatically higher than the rest of the business uh, that is a clear understanding uh i would definitely say in the second half of the year definitely yes because the prices virtually fell down to I think now the average realization on this test is even lower than the overall portfolio uh, realization. So I think, to my mind, we are exiting on a lower margins on on COVID business than what we have as a company. Maybe in the early part of the year, margins may have been slightly higher. Understood. Sir. Okay, so that is helpful. And the second question I have, sir, you talked about the higher proportion of volume incrementally coming from the franchisee channel. Uh, what does this mean for our profit? yeah i think uh, two things that uh, what it means is that first is the way we run our business because if you trace the history go back 15 20 years back a lot of walk in business used to happen in our own infra so as a company we were more used to uh, providing the service ourselves but now we have to provide the same experience through a franchisee of course we have a huge experience in managing franchisee network It, it somehow augurs well because we are able to provide accessibility to the brand uh, which earlier through 200 lab was not possible but now through 5000 collection centers it is doable it's possible it is reaching reaching to the hinterland of uh, india so i think that's one advantage second is uh, because there is a revenue share involved and so we need to i think a lot of the revenue booking would happen at different sort of a may not happen at gross level depending on how we account it that's another change which is going to happen third i think uh, cost structure has become more variable in nature than fixed because our own infra is more fixed so our overheads uh, it's is easily in fact it's visible also in our numbers where rental costs are sharply going down uh, primarily because now we have franchise infra so overall there is a shift of uh, cost that we were seeing earlier now to franchise which is much more variable in nature uh, but this doesn't necessarily mean uh, substantially lower profits uh, from this channel not really not really because uh, sometimes our own infrastructure is more expensive than franchise infra because, because we end up taking space at high street locations and where the rentals are very very high and franchise network is much more neighborhood in nature uh, the rental cost for them is not very high so when you shift there sometimes they actually have much higher profitability than than the same customer being served in our own setup so i really don't see that as a issue right bharat okay yes, of course yeah thank you so much thank you thank you next question is from the line of shriram rati from bnp parama please go ahead 
Yes, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, firstly, uh, this suburban around 30 crores, I think this quarter, I think pre COVID it used to do around 40 crores plus. So, how should we look at this rate going forward for a 523 and onward? And should we be back to, let's say, 160, 174 annual revenue, or like 30 crores is more of the new business? So your voice is not that clear, but I think I've got a sense of it, uh, what you're asking. You're basically saying that non-COVID business of whatever that number, 160, 170 crore, will it do, should we look at the same number as going forward? Is what you're asking? Yes, sir. Right. Right, right. I think I'll ask Ved to uh, answer this question because uh, some of the accounting is your question. Yeah. So, Shriram, uh, uh, first I, I want to uh, you know mention here that because of uh, transition from IGAP to India's uh, being part of our uh, parent company now, uh, we are changing uh, the recording of revenue from gross to net, uh, which uh, which uh, will change essentially. You know, it will not be strictly comparable with 170, 180, whatever figure we used to have pre-COVID. So. Uh, that is where uh, one change you will find going forward. But having said that, like to like, if we you know see those uh, those trends, I think we we are uh, trending much higher than what we used to do in the past. Okay, okay. So the 30 crore non-COVID revenue for Q4 uh, that would have been impacted to some extent by Omicron as well. 30 crore plus the net revenue because this is not uh, yes. gross. Uh, there is a you know 20 25 percent kind of uh, gross up. You can do it. Okay, sure. Sir. And uh, secondly, uh, I mean uh, generally in the past we used to guide for let's like, say 14 15 percent kind of base business growth. Uh, from going forward, assuming that the COVID waves are behind us, should we be back to 14 15 growth? Percent growth from aside 23. I mean, actually, percent for the Dr. Lars organic business. I think it's a great question. We are also searching for the answer. Uh, I just did a quick uh, back of the envelope calculation. We did about 1330 crore in FY20 when there was no COVID. Uh, I think the last week of March was impacted due to COVID. Uh, this year we have done 1691 non-COVID, right? Yeah. So, yes. if I just look at some math, it just tells me that 12.5% CAGR. Now, uh, yes, there is an advantage in the base in FY20, but there is also a disadvantage in the current year because I know that Omicron has impacted, and even Q1 of uh, this financial year, which is April, May last year, same time, we had wave 2 that also depressed uh, non-COVID business. So I think if I factor all that, so I clearly feel that we are in that mid-teens range uh, going forward. Uh, but that's the way that's the way you and I can do the same math. So I think uh, it should be in place. Okay, got it. That's helpful, sir. That's helpful. And so one related question. I mean, generally, like, I mean, Q3 is the seasonally weakest quarter for Dr. Lal. And this time, Q4 looks like to be weakest, I mean, maybe because of Omicron, but at the same time, Margins have also been lowest in Q4. Uh, I mean, even versus Q3, it is lower. Is it just Omicron or is there something more? Current? So, uh, so Shriram, there are uh, two things. One, obviously, uh, you know, the impact of suburban. As we know, suburban is always, have, uh, you know, lower margin. So, largely the impact, uh, which is, uh, you know, if you are looking, the, those margins for Q4 is, you know, diluted due to suburban consolidation and uh, second obviously the uh, impact of Omicron on non-COVID business. So both put together there is a uh, you know margin impact. Okay, okay, got it, got it. And uh, one last question, uh, uh, considering this uh, the competition intensity which is increasing and that too with the price for, I mean there may not be any, any immediate impact on the business. But how do you see uh, this thing happening on the long, longer term perspective and at the same time? Yeah, I know. I think since yesterday there's been a lot of uh, coverage around this whole pricing of uh, some of the new age players versus uh, old players. See, my way of looking at it is uh, like this. Some of this price competition is much more visible these days than what it used to be earlier because we were up against a lot of... Uh, local competition, unorganized players. 
So that's one point I want to make. Uh, now I think price competition is again some of these large players. Uh, second is a uh, lot of noise is around some lot of promotion that happens when you launch a lab in a city. Now these pr price points are not at national level. Even when we also launch in some small towns, etc., we run a lot of promotions. Uh, technically, in a business like this, you just don't create awareness. You also push for a call for action. Just saying that Dr. Lal has come with this lab, it really doesn't mean anything because it's not, a, it's not a want, right? Nobody wants to go for a test just because it's cheaper. It's only when the person needs it, right? So all of us end up using some of these uh, price promotions to drive for call for action because it leads to a, some kind of health checkup. So I think these are all isolated uh, cases in some one or two cities, but they are not at national level. But having said that, let's keep that aside for a minute. But I just want to highlight in terms of consumer behavior. And I have worked for consumer products now and been in healthcare for so, so many years. I think healthcare is a bit more complex than any other brand building. General perception is that a lowest price guy will walk away, uh, the entire uh, will be a dominant player, but I haven't seen that happening in this space. Uh, we end up actually making this choice mainly because we trust the brand, it's a very, very high credence value, and nobody wants to take chances with health. And uh, diagnosis is just about 5% of total healthcare cost. And I just uh, got some numbers from my team. Average frequency of purchase in our business is less than one visit a year. And hardly about 30% people actually come more than once in a year. I personally believe that nobody would take chances to, to go to a place which they don't trust. And, uh, and I think lower price point at times can also <coughs> harm the brand to position as a not a great quality brand. So I think, uh, it just does not mean that you are lowest, doesn't mean that you will have a high market share. We have tried that in the past in many cities, but we have not been successful. So I think the point is to be affordable. <clears throat> point is to be uh, not to get outpriced. Uh, so my response to uh, to manage this business would be that we need to be very, very efficient, cost effective. Yes, there will be a pressure on the business if some players actually use cash burn model and continue to hammer us. But I'm not sure whether that's a sustainable idea over the long term. That's the way I would respond to this uh, new age competition. Okay, sure. That's helpful, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I request to all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Neha Manpuria from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, the first question is on realization. So if I look at the non-COVID realization, it seems like it's down low single digit, you know, on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, I just wanted to understand, uh, is the trend similar if I were to look at it, you know, Dr. Lal, uh, ex-suburban and including suburban? Yeah. So, Neha, uh, uh, wait here. So, uh, if you see like-to-like -like revenue, revenue per patient is almost flat. There is slight impact due to, you know, government because of, because uh, uh, those are, uh, you know, high, high contribution from COVID, COVID related tests. But if you see uh, non-COVID realization is uh, almost same. And this is same which we used to have, you know, pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. If you remember, 685, 686 yeah. is the revenue which we always have. Okay, understood. And uh, second, uh, if, I know you're not talking about month-on-month -month trend, but if I were to look at the, um, you know, growth rate in March, uh, you know, would that growth rate number be double-digit and is, is the revenue that we see in March a sustainable number? You, are, you mean to say about growth rates? So, so I'm asking if the growth rate was double digit and, you know, and, and if I were to look at the absolute revenue, is that number sustainable, uh, you know, what we saw in March when there was no Omicron impact? Yeah, so there's a word of caution here. Uh, I think the March sale should not be seen as only March sale. It should also be seen as a backlog of uh, uh, Feb as well or Jan as well, right? Hmm. So I rather hesitate to look at a weekly or a monthly numbers in this business. I would rather look at uh, more a quarterly number 
there are all pointers that uh, definitely March figures are healthier than Jan, Feb, but they may not be completely indicative for what we are going to do in FY23. Understood. But, uh, just to say, since you are asking, is it double digit? Answer is yes, it's in double digit. Hmm. It's definitely not 4% that uh, we are talking about for the quarter. Understood. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pooja Bhatia from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening, everyone. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, Dr. Om, in your opening remarks, you mentioned that you would be focusing on um, becoming more cost effective. So what are the measures the undertaken and uh, what's the plan going forward? Right. So the cost effective is, uh, I think there is an evolving construct on the supply side of this business. Uh, if you look at in the past, we used to have one big central lab and a lot of peripheral or we call them satellite labs. But that also consumes a lot of overheads, right? So having more and more satellite lab is not a, is not a cost friendly idea. So we are now looking at hub labs as a concept where we probably go for fewer labs but build a wider test menu in the region and invest behind logistics to provide a, a turnaround time. I think that fundamentally that is the one big change we are seeing in our cost structure. Second is uh, something which is naturally happening to us is collection is moving more towards franchisee uh, which provides a variable cost structure than fixed cost structure when we do our own collection. So I think these are two big sort of ticket items in terms of making it more efficient than lean machine. Okay. Um, over the next, say, two, three years, if we take a midterm outlook, uh, where do you think margins could settle given that uh, there, there are a lot of changes taking place in the business model with um, higher franchisees? So that would bring a, a lot of variable cost, like you mentioned, and test mix uh, changing towards more uh, semi-specialized, specialized, more wellness, more of um, home testing. So is there a scope for margins to improve from these levels, given that we are already at elevated margins? No, no, no. I think I don't think there is any scope to improve margins. Uh, I would say that margins actually would uh, probably mimic what we used to have pre-COVID times. Uh, as I see in the last two years, we've had sort of higher margins uh, mainly because of operating leverage flowing through higher throughput of COVID sales. As I sit now, FY23, and I look into the P&L, I see there's a big tailwind on reagent cost because COVID reagent cost is higher than the overall portfolio cost. So I, I do believe that a couple of percentage benefits we should get on lower reagent cost as we go out of FY22 and into 23. Uh, there are headwinds also. We will lose operating leverage that we had. Uh, second is as a portfolio, as a one P&L, because Suburban has a lower margin profile. I think that also should impact our margins. And uh, I think on, on balance, I would say that our margins would be more in line with what we used to do pre-COVID days rather than uh, any improvement from here. Right? Yeah. Um, currently, uh, Suburban caters to a few micro-markets in Mumbai, uh, so that leaves a lot of scope for you to uh, densify your presence. Uh, is there any calibrated uh, plan to enter new markets um, in the rest of Maharashtra? So, uh, Suburban has three focus markets right now, Mumbai, Pune, and Goa. Uh, we will, uh, I think the first is to really see, build our presence uh, in Mumbai and Pune uh, within Maharashtra. And I think that's a short-term focus for next six to nine months. I think as we exit out of this year, then we'll see what we can do in the rest of Maharashtra. But I would say in FY23, laser sharp focus on these two cities, Mumbai and Pune. And we are building one... Uh, I mentioned about reference lab. That earlier plan was uh, uh, LPL, the same lab now we'll cater to suburban as well. Okay, and have you made any changes to the processes uh, in suburban? Uh, I think it's a bit early right now. I think uh, disproportionate focus is on the on the demand side on on building the franchisee network. Uh, that's where the real focus is. Understood. Thanks. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Praful Kumar from Diamond Asia. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. There is a couple of questions. First, in terms of say one year, three year, five year goals in terms of integration, uh, Dr. Om and team, what are you looking at from suburban in terms of say scale? How do you you know change and update the EBITDA margins that the business support today to higher level? Maybe a medium term path towards high profitability. Is it through port? Is it more of you know uh, uh, home pickup? So, in terms of model and your medium term goals, can you elaborate uh, on the profitability part and scaling up? So, I think uh, at the front end, we want to retain both the brands, Dr. Lal Pass Labs and Suburban. At the back end, uh, initially we had thought that we will try and see that uh, supply side also remains different. But given the kind of uh, cost pressure and margin pressure, we probably would look at uh, synergies much faster than what we would have done. Uh, we are looking at how do we leverage Dr. Lal Path Labs network as well as as well as suburban together in Mumbai and state of Maharashtra. And I find that if we combine both the infra, we probably are well placed to really grow the market. I think immediately that will be our priority on on suburban. And overall, if if I were to really put my uh, sort of thumb on something, which essentially would be uh, suburban, we need to drive growth. It's an under sort of a leveraged brand. It's a very strong consumer facing brand in the city of Mumbai. If you can crack this model of driving growth uh, much faster than what this company has been doing in the past, I think we will be home in about three years time. So yeah, that's why I wanted to understand, sir. Let's take a three-year, five-year outlook because when you did the call for the merger, when you did call out this acquisition, you clearly said that we have done this keeping in mind a medium-term view. Maybe a medium term, obviously, it's start with a one-year and three-year goal as well. Uh, what are the key metrics tracking in relation to what we did last five, year or nine. the success? Is it more? Is it you know? How do you increase the truth? Because what are you changing at the margin? Can you so sorry to interrupt you. To understand? Yeah. I'll request to wait for Hello? the line for the part, uh, for the management board. Please stay connected. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. We have the line for the management reconnected. Praful, may I request to repeat your second yeah, question for the management once again? Yeah, hi. Well, I'll, I'll repeat my question. Dr. Tom, I wanted to understand more because, you know, Initially, when you did the, this, this acquisition, and now you have a lot of data, you have a lot more you know, grip on the way the system and process run. So, even with going with your thesis of a medium term, uh, you know, turnaround and scaling up, can you give us granularity more on how you know just the throughput goes up? It's getting more competitive. You're talking about pricing pressures in an inflationary environment, and uh, I want to understand more from you. You know, as investors, that how do you then scale up the franchise? Uh, how 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 does it happen? So, in terms of one year, three year, five year goals, say throughput per per, per you know outlet. How 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 it is shaping up now? What are you doing to increase it? Right, right. So, I think let me just give you a broad sort of a paint the picture for this company suburban. Uh, this company actually was operating, uh, if I remember, about 10 percent EBITDA margin, right? pre-COVID, but had a very strong sort of a consumer franchise, very strong brand in the city of Mumbai and some other parts of Maharashtra. Then comes COVID, this company business becomes 2x uh, because 50% of the contribution was coming from COVID. Now, this company then experienced a very high sort of a EBITDA margin. I think it went up to nearly 20 odd percent. So the first lesson that we learn is if we are able to double the turnover of this company from city of Mumbai itself, this business has a potential to improve EBITDA margins. Uh, to our surprise, I think we never expected COVID to fall so sharply, which is which is welcome thing from one perspective. Uh, that actually has pushed us back to the same EBITDA trajectory what it used to have before, because suddenly you you lost. Or we are see, we are staring at a loss of nearly half of turnover because that used to come from COVID. I think the immediate now priority would be to drive non-COVID growth. Clearly, it has demonstrated that <clears throat> if I can take the turnover 2x, I should go back to 20% EBITDA margin. 
I think the first message to my team is that make sure that we grow COVID. At least in the next two to three years, we go back to what our numbers were with COVID. Non Sorry, we grow non-COVID, we go back to what our numbers were with both together. Second is uh, uh, bring it, uh, bring efficiency and leverage our network of LPL as well. Uh, I don't have exact numbers of collection centers in the state of Maharashtra and the labs, but uh, but my sense is that if we combine the two, our network would be amongst the top two or three players. So we have clear, we are clearly well placed on investment at the back end. All we have to now turbocharge the front end and see how we grow the non-COVID business as we go forward. I think that's the way I would look at it. Uh, and then probably segment the market because uh, there are there are consumers at various price segments. There are customers who are looking for great quality service, home collection, willing to pay higher price. Then there's a mass market segment which probably Dr. Lal Path Labs is used to. Uh, let's see how we actually able to drive growth in these these places. Thank you, Prof. I'll request you to come back in the question queue. I request to all the participants, please register to do questions per participant. The next question is from the line of Hussein from Ambit Asset Management. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. I hope I'm audible. Yes. So, uh, so sir, uh, my one question was with regards to the competitive intensity, which you yourself mentioned is backed uh, to most extent by the uh, immense cash burn what these companies seem to be doing. Now, uh, here, uh, suppose I believe, I, I believe that this will not wane off uh, in a quarter or two, and probably it will be there in the near term. So if it starts uh, impacting our uh, volume, would we be uh, comfortable in taking, uh, uh, you know, in taking some? Uh, price cuts to save volume or would we look to maintain our margins like if, if it's in the tune of you know two to five percent impact so I just wanted to understand uh, our positioning over there should the intensity uh, increase in terms of uh, competitive pricing thank you so I think I'll, I'll probably watch as we go along but uh, my take on some of these things that are happening is India is highly underserved under penetrated market and some of this competitive intensity actually might be a good news also because they will expand the market. And the market would expand at the upper end of the funnel where uh, lots of the screening and health checkups, etc., would happen where the, where the downside the perception from a patient is not that high and they may actually fall for a lower price test. And if the numbers increase at that end of the funnel, so I presume some percentage would fall into a, a medical driven brand, which is where we are. And uh, hopefully it should actually benefit us, this intensity that we are talking about. And I look back uh, examples of insurance companies when the private insurers came and the uh, biggest brand, uh, which is trusted brand, benefited out of that. So I do believe that we are synonymous with pathology. People trust our name. And uh, hopefully as the market grows, we also should benefit. Now coming back to, uh, would we chase them on pricing? Uh, I think time will tell, but my current sense is I don't want to chase uh, building the brand on pricing, but I definitely don't want to, we want to run our company efficiently so that our cost structure is efficient. And at some point in time, eventually they also have to do the same thing what we do. Like they have to test, they have to collect, they have to transport samples. Uh, to provide the same turnaround time. So I just we need to make sure that we are efficiently run company uh, rather than get into a cash burn model. I probably won't do that. Understood, understood. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Praveen Sahai from Edelweiss Financial Service. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. My first question is related to the franchise management, what you are talking about. Uh, so, uh, what kind of a uh, uh, revenue contribution you are expecting the way forward from the franchises? And is there any challenge related to the quality also you are forcing? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. Uh, we declare our franchisee contribution in the annual reports, which we will do, but a significant portion of the business today. The exact numbers that come in the annual reports. Um, the second thing I would like to say is that on the quality part, we have come a very, very long way now. Across all parameters, we since we have built a digitally 
linked up system uh, our quality on the franchisee network is uh, you know as good as what we would do in our own infrastructure today yes obviously there is scope for improvement and there are various things we are doing to fix this gap uh, but uh, you know i am very happy to say that our franchises have come a long long way and with the use of digital technologies we have been able to scale up uh, this whole operation uh, seamlessly without any uh, difference to the patients okay helpful second question is related to uh, as you had also mentioned that the bundle bundle business has also increased so where you want to see this business uh, uh, to contribute in the coming uh, year how much can so there is no specific target we have to say we have to reach x percentage of revenue and so on the idea is of this bundle test is fundamentally to offer value for money for the patients on one side and that value comes from efficient operations of this bundling which we do right so it's our it's our endeavor to provide the best possible service we cannot dictate you have to take this you know package and we're not a aggressive telesales company uh so there is no specific target but given the popularity of what we have seen of bundle test over the last 3 4 years and the market trends in general we think that it will continue to grow uh, as a significant contribution to our business so it's similar like what the current quarter we are seeing in the first bit is 18% so is it like that yeah yeah so it will continue in this direction uh, i mean it used to be 16 17% sometime back 15% a uh, couple of years back so it's been inching steadily and our business has also been growing thank you pravin has request to come back in the question queue for a follow up question the next question is from the line of araki prasad from alda capital please go ahead hi good evening thanks for taking my question um i wanted to understand the 345 odd crores of borrowing that we have taken on our books and what is the plan of uh the repayment plan going forward since we have significant cash on books that is my first yeah. question so uh, raki is yes, uh, we have uh, taken about 250 crore term loan and uh, rest is uh, od against fds anyway uh, we have net net 344 crores of cash balance as on 31st march so uh, obviously we are you know getting this uh, borrowing much cheaper than what we have uh, in fds so our plan may be going forward it should be over by maybe next one year okay and uh, also on the stock option charge to pnl um so we saw this bump up happening this year about 30 and a half crores versus 20 crores of last year um can you give us some idea of how this would look going forward or um, how do we think of this charge to pnl uh going forward Is, would it be at this level or uh, would it be at a different level uh so raki this charge is a uh, little higher because of uh, two things one is of course uh, the last grant was done on at a higher price because that time price was uh, higher and second the uh, you know charge was coming uh, or came in this year for uh, multiple grants going forward i think uh, the charge will be in the range what we have earlier like uh, between 20 25 crore uh, kind of charge fee uh, yeah i think it got peaked mainly because of two reasons one the price was very high that time yeah and i think multiple grants just got clubbed yes this is probably the peak okay okay all right thank you both for my questions thank you the next question is from line of anuj sagal from manas asian equities please go ahead Uh, hello can you hear me yes yes we can hear you yeah yeah hi good evening um uh, i just have one simple question uh, um so you know when i look at fy20 and now fy22 your uh, number of patients has grown by almost 41% from 19.4 million to 27.3 million that's an increase of 8 million patients uh, have you done any analysis to see how many of these 8 million patients came uh, to you for covid testing and that's 
you know, almost uh, sort of getting customers for zero customer acquisition cost. And how can you sort of data mine and serve these incremental customers that you've got because of COVID and sell them, you know, more value-added tests than other uh, offerings that you guys have? Yeah, I think you're right. I don't have that sheet in front of me, but a uh, large, large number of these patients also came because of COVID testing. And COVID has two parts. One is RT-PCR and then allied tests. So allied tests are a little bit overlapping between non-COVID and COVID allied. Uh, we're just trying to pick that out. I think the other thing is I take your suggestion, uh, the, what we can do with this customer base to upsell something. I probably may not have immediate answers to give you, but I think it's a great point and we should uh, consider that and maybe come back to you what we'll do. Yeah, Anuj, this is Dr. Lal here. Uh, maybe this figure is helpful to you that we have done more than 3.2 million RT-PCR tests, but that is from the beginning. So you can imagine the, uh, the, the numbers have really, you know, gone up. And um, uh, of course, now the, uh, we, we welcome the, the the transit away of the of the uh, COVID testing, so that you know life comes back to normal. And don't forget that there is a very very major segment which was not tested during COVID days, and that was the the NCDs, the non you know communicable diseases or the the uh, the chronic disease segment or the lifestyle disease segment. So they are slowly coming back. And don't forget that those are very, very serious patients. Patients, you know, who had renal failure, who had kidney transplants, who had heart disease, who had, had been scented, and so many, you know, liver, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So those patients, you know, were not looked after. And I think we are seeing this trend now that the our NCD business is almost or probably back to normal now. Thank you. So I just got this data, 3.35 million patients are on account of uh, RT-PCR testing. Correct. 33 lives. That's from the beginning. It can't be year-wise, but from the beginning. No, that's for, for the year. For the year? For the year. For the year. Yes. For one year. Sorry, I stand corrected. Uh, for one year. So, so this is not over uh, the two FY21 and FY22. This is just for FY22. This is just for FY22, yes. Right. Okay. So no, the reason I was highlighting this or trying to understand is even, even if I assume that. But uh, you, sorry, Anu, I, I, I Anu, sorry, I'll correct you because this also would have some numbers from suburban coming in as, as well. Right. 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 No, but needless to say, uh, um, the point is that you know, let's say we even if we double this number, you know, you have five million coming to. Uh, uh, because of, or maybe even almost six million new customers that have come to your uh, channel or to local Lal, uh, which would have not otherwise come through had COVID not at all happened. Uh, maybe there could be some overlap, but nevertheless, you know, you have six million additional customers who you can now, because they're in your database and you can now target them over and above the, you know, regular normal growth that you would have had. Yes, yes. So I think point well taken. Uh, this definitely one can do some marketing activity around this. Uh, however, they all may not be new customers because most of these gains are from the city of Delhi and that's where our market share is high. So, But I still take your point. I think there is something something to be done here. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sonal Gupta from l Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Good evening and thanks for taking my question. Uh, just wanted to get a sense, I mean, uh, on a pro forma basis, I mean, maybe using non-COVID revenues as a benchmark, how much would the contribution to your revenues be of the top 10 cities? Uh, and uh, what percentage would be, uh, in top 10 cities, what would be the share of home collection? So this data may not be readily available, but we'll note this question down and come back to you if you can share your number with us. Sure, sir. And just the other thing was in terms of uh, like uh, previously uh, you have mentioned that the economics is similar for home collection versus having a franchisee outlet. So uh, just trying to understand, is there any change there or uh, I mean, it can't, uh, there's no, uh, it's similar even now? It's similar only because uh, phlebotomist salary cost versus real estate, I think this just just offset each other. So it should be similar. Got it. Got it. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is 
from the line of Sayan Mukherjee from Namora Holdings. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, good evening. Actually, I just uh, wanted to check uh, overall if you can share, uh, you know, what's the revenue contribution from wellness or swastfit uh, online and home collection. Overall, if you have the number for 4Q and FY22. Yeah, so our uh, revenue from swastfit is close over 18%. Online and offline. Yeah, and uh, the second question you had was on uh, collection. home collections about 12%, like Dr. Om mentioned in his uh, opening speech. Uh, and on online versus offline, I don't have the numbers readily available. Uh, we can come back to you on that. And this, these numbers you're saying is including suburban for the fourth quarter? This is uh, excluding suburban, yeah. No, uh, home collection and uh, the first fit numbers are excluding suburban. So 18% in the total, but if you exclude suburban from the base, your number would actually go down. 18% of LPS, okay. 18% of LPS. Okay. And this is for the fourth quarter, sir? Yes, it is. Uh, you mentioned, I think, uh, sometime back, uh, you know, you are uh, sort of tying up with, um, you know, pharmacies for, you know, patients. I mean, uh, any pro I mean, can you share uh, how many pharmacies you have tied up with uh, any no, color? No, no, no. no, no I, th I don't think. Maybe, maybe I, I got misunderstood. I, I don't think we are tying with pharmacies. But the question which I am often being asked is that are there a lot of these new age players who are doing teleconsultation, who are doing e-pharmacy? Okay. Would you would you be partnering with them? My answer has been yes, but right now it's uh, there's nothing to talk about. But we would be open to such partnership if, if, if these partnerships are available. That's the question. That's the answer I gave. But right now we are not doing anything with any pharmacy chains. Okay. And uh, so sorry to interrupt you. I'll request you to come back in the question oh. queue. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Santan Maji from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for taking my question. So I have two. So first one is on Swastfit. So uh, I assume that Swastfit includes, um, you know, preventive wellness uh, health packages and, you know, bundling of sickness packages, as, uh, sickness tests as well. So can you give a rough split of how much of it is pure, you know, health packages, wellness packages, and how much of it is the bundling of the sickness tests? It's very difficult to actually figure that out, but I would directionally say the large part of it is... Uh, bundle sickness uh, area only, but uh, health checkups would not be that, at least definitely lower than 50%. Uh, my sense would be 70% would be upgradation of our bundle uh, our sickness packages only. So that's why we normally don't call these as a health checkups. We actually call them bundled packages. Okay, that's helpful. And second question is on uh, the regional reference laboratory in um, uh, Mumbai. So that was earlier, I think, supposed to come by end of FY22. So now, when do we expect it to be running? And you know, can give any uh, you know rough idea about the you know capacity of this uh, laboratory? Is it going to be as large as the one in Kolkata, or smaller than that? So yes, I think we took a little bit of time because we wanted to do a paperwork on suburban. Uh, because we decided to have only one lab rather than having two labs, one in LPL and one in Suburban. And since Suburban is going to be lead brand, so we thought we should have it under that. I think we have, uh, Shanko, can I say about a couple of months from now? Yeah. I think a couple of months from now, we are waiting only for certain certain licenses to come in. Uh, we should actually be up and running in, in two months from now, is a sense that we have. Uh, okay, and uh, what about the capacity? It's like a Bangalore lab. It's like our Bang Bangalore. Yeah. It's like a Bangalore, but he won't know what Bangalore. Na? So it's. I would say if our Delhi is hundred, uh, then this would be about sixty, about eighty, sixty-seven. Between the capacity is modular because he's thinking about test. Acha, okay. I think we look at capacity in different ways. I think you probably would be looking at num capacity to do number of tests, right? Yeah. We don't, we don't look at that way. We look at uh, test yes, menu. menu. Uh, if I do 100 tests in my Delhi and, uh, Delhi lab, what is the test menu in Mumbai? So I think that is the way we look at it. 
because adding capacity is not a big challenge in this space. It's more about uh, uh, test, widening the test menu. Like the moment you add one extra department, your test menu just goes up sharply. So I think we would look at test menu around 70 to 75 compared to what we do in uh, in our Delhi lab. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Dam Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking the question. Oh, ma, sorry, just to persist on the question, around comp question around the competition between us earlier. Just one uh, quick one on that. Uh, you know, when you're talking about competition uh, and you're referring it to the competition that you've seen in the past, uh, you know, there has been a lot of unorganized, a lot of unknown, relatively unknown names which have been uh, sort of coming into the uh, market. I mean, if assuming some of the better known national brands like the Tatas and the Reliance of the World start competing aggressively in this market and probably looking to use uh, diagnostics as a as a bleed to probably build a, say, a consumer business around it, uh, I mean, does that change your perception of how competition can impact this overall dynamics for this business? Yes, it will. Obviously, if the big names come in, uh, uh, that will definitely impact the overall business. There is no doubt about that. So I think let's accept the fact that this competition will definitely let so, me how it so, goes. So Nitin and Dr. Lal here. So let me tell you that these different price points is something which we have been seeing for a very long time. And super added to the fact that there has been commoditization of this business. And uh, please remember the Indian Railways model that you are going from point A to point B, there is undeserved, you know, second class, there is reserved second class, there is, you know, AC chair car, there is uh, non-AC and two tier, three tier. They all are paying different kind of prices for different kind of services. But they are all going from point A to point B. So India is such a huge country which can have, I think, from my point of view, a few more price points. So that the, the market will decide, you know, what kind of service they want for what you know, money they pay. But one thing is sure that you you, you will not be able to buy a, a Toyota Corolla for the price of an auto 800. That's for sure. So I think what Dr. Lal is saying that market is so large, there are various price segments which exist. So far, uh, attempt has not been made, but to my mind, one will have to be target, uh, one will have to do a targeted sort of a segmentation in this case and find its own position. Sure. The point is well taken. Secondly, uh, just an observation on the you know and, uh, on the uh, financials. You know, we've been talking about the increasing share of franchisee in our business, but when I look through the last four quarters, a percentage of franchisee revenue cost to revenues has been coming down. So, uh, how should one look at that number? No. Uh, so, Nitin Vedya. So, this is not uh, true representation because uh, there is a COVID contribution which is fluctuating quarter on quarter. And that's fair. Directionally, if you see, uh, this fees is increasing because the contribution is increasing from, uh, you know, collection centers or franchisee. Uh, but uh, not, uh, you, you, you not, uh, better not compare these last few quarters because of COVID. Okay, fine. Fair enough. Got it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. And now I'll hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Okay, uh, so thank you everyone for being uh, with us on this call today. I wish you all remain safe and healthy. I would now request the moderator to close the call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Dr. Lal Pathlabs Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.